Hello everybody, hello friends from uh, the Midwest, from all over the United States and all over the world that are tuning in right now and are wanting to learn more from the Lord's language, from the ancient Hebrew and get some nuggets of insight for, for their close relationship with the Lord. Let's get started right now. Again, my special greetings to people from the Midwest, the Henderson and Hancock, Hancock counties of Illinois. Uh, you will probably appreciate this uh, to-go cup with West Central Heat logo on it. Go West Central Heat! Okay. Now let's go. Today we're going to be talking about Psalm 23. And uh, uh, we're going to be discussing what it's all about. And uh, we will try with God's help uh, to comment on it and to give you some nuggets of truth uh, from, uh, from ancient Hebrew. Uh, let's begin. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. I'm using the, uh, uh, the New King James Version, so if you are comfortable with that, it's fine. If you would like me to use another version and if there is enough comments, by the way, comment uh, below. Uh, don't hesitate. Um, like, dislike, share your thoughts about the whole project. Um, so... Uh, what version of the Bible would you prefer? NIV, New King James Version, you name it. A Psalm of David, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It starts with this beautiful phrase. The Lord is my shepherd. You know, this psalm is known all over the world, in all different languages. Here in northern Russia, for instance, in Komi Republic, where I live, uh, it's a very popular psalm, by the way. Um, uh, the Protestant Christians, Evangelicals, Russian Orthodox folks, they know this psalm. Believe it or not, they read the same Bible <clears throat> as you guys do. And uh, this psalm is known sung, celebrated, uh, prayed all over the world. This is one of people's favorite psalms. And so it starts out with this, uh, with this name of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. You know, uh, I like translations. You know, I'm a professional interpreter myself. And I really like the New King James Version. But at the same time, if you read it in the original Hebrew, you will find uh, no such word as Lord in the Hebrew language. It actually starts out with God's holy name, which many Jews prefer not to pronounce, and they replace that name with the Hebrew phrase Hashem, which means the name. But we, like in the English-speaking world, know this name by the name Jehovah or Yahweh or Yahovah. You probably heard about that name too, right? So most of the time you find uh, the word Lord in the Old Testament, 99% of the times uh, you will actually see the original God's name Jehovah there. Yahovah or Yahweh there. What does this name mean? By the way, it's written with four Hebrew letters. Yud, He, Vav, He. Yud, He, Vav, He. By the way, the Hebrew language is such an interesting language. They write uh, only with consonants. You will probably wonder, you know, how, how do they read their text then? if they use only consonants. Could you, could you imagine, like in English, you would, you would, you would write uh, the word uh, mother, 
with no with no um, vowels in it, what would you what what would you, what would you have in your text? Mother. But when they see those consonants, and when they read the text, they add vowels. They know how to pronounce this word, so they add vowels as they go along, as they read the text. You see how interesting it's all, it all is. So, that's why the Lord's name is written with four consonant letters. Yud, He, Vav, He. Yahovah or Jehovah. And how, what is the correct word to pronounce that name? You know, I've done some research on this, and to be honest, very few people actually know how to correctly pronounce that name, believe it or not. Because, you know, in the text, it only has four consonants. And what vowels do you add to these four consonants? Hmm? Interesting question. So traditionally, uh, as I said, the Jews just prefer not to pronounce the, the name altogether. They just replace it with the word Adonai, Lord, or Hashem, which means the name. But some researchers, uh, like Nehemiah Gordon, you can you look him up um, uh, online, Nehemiah Gordon, uh, he's a, a Jewish scholar uh, who worked with the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls and uh, studied them in depth. He claims that the correct version of the pronunciation of God's name is probably Yahovah. So, the psalm starts out with God's holy name, which we are told in the Ten Commandments not to use in vain. Again, we're not here to discuss what it means to use God's name in vain. Every believer, I guess, knows that you need to use uh, venerance, you know, uh, you, you need to treat that name with reverence, uh, reverence, and uh, honor that name. Um, but anyways, this name I am, or the Lord who was, who is, and will be, this is one of the interpretations of this holy name. By the way, there, there is no such thing as one correct understanding of God's holy name. Because there is only four letters, and there are some hints in these four letters, but what does this name really stand for? Very few people know. Remember, Moses was in the wilderness, and he saw the burning bush, and God spoke to him there with this famous phrase, Let my people go. And Moses said, what is your name, God? And remember what God said in the book of Exodus? He basically said, I paraphrase here, he basically said, I will be who I will be. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? You know, does it explain much to you about who God is? I will be who, who, whoever I will be. But God is so huge, He's so great, that you cannot really put Him in a box. Although many people would love to. He, he's the creator of the universe. How would you characterize Him? You know, names in Hebrew are something that uh, explains the crux of the matter. The the meaning of something, you know, the essence of a person or personality. How would you describe such a person as God? It's almost impossible using our human language. So uh, you might wonder, you know, why do you pay so much attention just to one word in the introduction of the psalm? Because it's important, folks. Because it's important that we understand who do we serve and what magnificent God is this creator that we're talking about in this psalm.
And so David says, this I am, this God who is beyond our understanding, who created the universe, and even the universe itself cannot contain him, this God is my shepherd. Huh. And because of that, I shall not want. I will have enough. God will take care of my needs. You know, the Hebrew word for shepherd uh, is uh, roe, roi, uh, which means the, the one who observes, the one who looks at you constantly, like observer, you know, uh, he's watching out for you. He's watching your back. He's watching your surroundings. That's why you can really feel safe in his presence. Let's read this word in, verse in Hebrew. Mizmor um, le David. Mizmor means like a song, a song of praise that you actually sing and play some musical instrument to accompany it with. Adonai roi lo exar. All right, we can use the word Adonai, which means Lord in Hebrew, uh, just to be neutral about this, but just bear in mind that where we have Adonai, or Lord, it actually says Yehovah, or I am, or this super, super God who is beyond even our understanding. He is my shepherd, I shall not want. We move on. He makes me, number two, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. What a wonderful verse, you know, and it's a beautiful translation, by the way. He really makes me to lie down in green pastures, like a loving shepherd taking care of his sheep and goats, heifers. You know, folks in, in the Midwest, those farming communities, <laughs> Uh, they probably understand uh, this verse much better than um, people who live in the cities, probably. Um, he leads me beside the still waters. You know, uh, where we have the word still waters, we have in Hebrew expression menuchot, uh, which means... Um, Comforting waters, a place of comfort, a place of peace. You know, how many of you uh, would love to experience some peace these days? You know, the situation, the global situation in the world is, is developing so rapidly that many people, even believers, are losing the peace of mind. They become hectic. They become nervous. And especially in these interesting times that we are living in, a time, times of testing and times of opportunities, by the way, we need to have the peace of mind which only God can give us. Let's read this verse in Hebrew. Binot deshe yarbitseni. Deshe means actually green grass. Grass deshe, al me menuchot, comforting waters, me waters, menuchot, comforting, yenaleni. You know, the root of the word menuchot is the word noach or Noah. Remember when Noah's dad gave him that name, Noah, the book of Genesis says he gave him that name because he said, he will give us rest in our labor, whatever he meant by that. But the word Noah or Noah in Hebrew actually means comfort, rest. If you find yourself in Israel someday, like in a shoe store or somewhere, you know, the shop assistant or store assistant or manager may come to you and uh, ask you, Noah, 
which means are you comfortable? Like, are these shoes okay for you? Do you feel comfortable wearing them? So, just you already know this useful word Noah to go to Israel maybe someday. Okay. Let's move on. Verse number three. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Many of us need soul restoration these days, don't we? He leads me in the paths of righteousness or justice for his name's sake. You see, again, King David is returning to the same topic of God's name. He starts out with God's sovereign name, the great I am, and he says, he does this spiritual work in my heart. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Just think about it. You know, when we became believers in Christ, we became part of God's people. We became His. And His name is, in a way, written on us. His reputation is at stake when it comes to how we live our lives, what's going on in our lives. His reputation, His name is at stake. So many things God does in our lives because He loves us, of course, and also because He treasures His holy name. His reputation is at stake. So think about this. How should we live out our lives on a day-to-day -day basis? in order not to put a black spot, God forbid, on God's holy name. Like Jesus said, remember? Let the people see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. I understand, brothers and sisters, that we're not perfect, but we really need to be working on this we really need to be working on this with God's help and the help of the Holy Spirit in order to promote God's name in a good way, in order for people to see God's work in our lives and so that they can glorify our Father who is in heaven. Like the Lord's Prayer says, Hallowed be thy name. Remember? God's name is very important. And he does a lot of things to preserve his reputation and to glorify his name. Let's read this verse in Hebrew. Nafshi Yeshovev Yancheni Vemagele Tzedek Leman Shemo. You hear this word Shemo, which means Shem, means name. You already know this word, name, Shem, in Hebrew. You know, one of Noah's children was called Shem. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, remember? And uh, the Hebrew people, or the Jewish people, and the Arab people, they are descendants of this Semitic line of Noah. That's why, uh, you know, the people who hate Jews are called anti-Semites, remember? Okay, number four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. See again this word, comfort? You bet there is a Noah word behind it, 
And you are absolutely right. There is such a root behind it. Noah, comfort, peace. You know, when people walk through some tough times, when they face the risk of death, they really need support from on high. But King David says, I will fear no evil, even in such dire circumstances. You know, David's life was very risky at times. He faced death many times. He knows what he's talking about here. And he says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. This is the reason I will fear no evil. Not because I'm so brazen, not because I'm so strong, but because you, God, the great I am, Jehovah, Jehovah, you are with me. And your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You know, have you ever wondered how can a rod and a staff comfort somebody? It's because David compares himself to a sheep. And when they see the shepherd holding that staff, holding that rod, it brings them comfort. It gives them confidence that no wolf and no dangerous animal will attack them. Some commentators say that uh, a rod is God's punishment, but his staff is uh, God's comfort and uh, God's leading us. Well, yeah, it, such a comment can, can be right. Why not? But remember that God's grace and God's love and God's bonuses, they surpass God's judgments and God's punishments many times. So number four in Hebrew sounds like this. Gam ki elech, if I go, elech means go, beget salmavet, in the valley of the shadow of death, lo ira ra, I will fear no evil. You hear that word ra, which means evil. Ki ata imadi, for you are with me. Ata in Hebrew means you. Shiftecha, your rod, umishantecha, and your staff, ema yenachamuni. You, you hear that root, route? Noch, nachamuni, noch, comfort, peace, they comfort me. Hallelujah. We move on to verse number five, which is even more beautiful, you might say. You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup, my cup runs over. Go, West Central Heat. Such a beautiful picture is presented to us here, brothers and sisters. You know, when you're surrounded with your problems and your enemies are, are about to tear you apart, God prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And he just walks over to you and says, Son, daughter, my beloved, you want something to eat? Something delicious? Something you can feast on? Let's do it. And you are standing there in awe and saying, uh, God, yeah, that sounds like a good idea, but what about all these people who are standing around me and are wanting to tear me apart? Are they just going to be sitting here and watching us, feasting? And God said, yeah, let them, let them stand around, Don't, no worries. We're okay. Let's have a feast together. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? God did not promise us that he will uh, 
that we will not have any trouble in our lives. But he promised us to be with us inside our problems, within our problems, in our problems, in our troubles and tribulations. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And this beautiful picture that he draws here, my cup runs over. You know, such a beautiful picture. Like, let your life be like an overflowing cup with every good thing that God has prepared for you. You know, Jews have a beautiful tradition. Uh, every uh, Saturday, when they get together for their meal, uh, they pour you know, some wine in their uh, cups and uh, they, they make wine uh, run over, you know, uh, and it's a beautiful symbol. I think they got that from Psalm 23 that says, let our lives be like an overflowing fountain, like an overflowing cup. The Hebrew version says, Taroch lefanai shulchan. Shulchan means table. Neget sorerai, in front of my enemies. Dishanta vashemen, you have poured oil on my head. Roshi, on my head. Rosh means head. Kosi, my cup. Kos in Hebrew means cup. Kos means cup. Revaya, runs over. Okay, and the last one, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. What a way to finish a beautiful psalm. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You know, it's a beautiful translation, by the way. The original basically says the same. Let God's goodness and God's mercy basically follow you everywhere you go. Would you like to have that? Everywhere you go, God's goodness and God's mercy basically, literally, follows your footsteps. I would like to have that opportunity. And God says... You can have it. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Basically, he's saying, I, I, will, I will be like where the temple of God is. You know, the house of the Lord actually meant in those days the temple of God. And David says, I don't want to leave that place. I don't want to leave the place of God's presence in this earth. On this earth you don't want to leave God's presence ever brothers and sisters sir and ma'am stay in the center of God's will for your life try to find it try to discover it for yourself and may you always be in the presence of the Almighty forever so the last verse in Hebrew says, Achtov, tov means goodness, vachesed, chesed means mercy, yirdefuni, let them follow me, kol yemei chayai, all the days of my life. Chai, chai in Hebrew means life. Chayai means my life. Veshafti bevet Adonai, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord, or the great I am, as you know it by now, long days or forever but the original actually says long days I wish you all the best brothers and sisters let the words of this psalm become true in our lives let's honor and give glory to the name of the Lord with our lips and with our lifestyles. And remember, 
The great creator of the universe loves you. And he really wants your life to be like a cup that runs over. With every spiritual blessing God has in store for you. Try to be in God's presence more. Get to love His Word more. Rededicate your life if you need to. Because He is waiting on you. He is right there. He is your loving Father. God bless you and have a great one, everybody.